Hello and welcome to Michigan and Other Mayhem, the show about Michigan, murder, mysteries, histories, and other mayhem from around the world. Your hosts are Allie and Jen. Okay, Jen, let's do this thing. Cue fake podcast music. Dun, dun. See, I didn't even ask wow, that. Wow, you caught me off guard there because you usually say hi to me. That's right. Hi, Jen. <laughs> and, then it, and then it was funny because I started the recording. Uh huh. I didn't invite you, so I'm like, why is it recording me right now and not playing the music? Oh, you're just chilling with yourself, like do 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 oh. do. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell oh. me, what are you what are you going to talk about today? I have the murder of Calvin Munnerlin. Munnerlin. Okay. M M U N E R L Y N, Flint, Michigan. What okay. do you have? Okay, so I wanted to look up, like, what's the most dangerous thing in Michigan? And then, comparable, the most dangerous thing, same thing in the world. Because, you know, Michigan won't really kill you unless you would get wet and cold or just get cold in the wintertime. Other than that, we don't really kill you. Maybe if you get Lyme disease, I don't know. Like, <laughs> if you get bit by a tick. But so I decided to do, like, our most dangerous lake in Michigan, then the most dangerous lake in the world like the most dangerous road curve in Michigan, the most dangerous road curve curve in the world, etc. That's cool. Yeah. Well, so, I'll go first because mine's... Do it. Sad. You're just sad? <laughs> well, shit, we've done sad. Let's, <laughs> let's get ready. <laughs> so Calvin was age 43, who was a f- father of eight. And he was working at a family dollar in Flint, Michigan. Okay. On May 1st, 2020. So really recent. Oh, yeah. Yep. The events leading up to his murder started around 2 p.m. A mom, Charmel, S-H-A-R-M-E-L, and her daughter entered the family dollar. Yeah. Calvin, working as a security guard, asked the daughter to wear a mask if she was going to enter the store. The daughter left the store, but Charmel began yelling at him, and Calvin asked her to leave the store. He even let the cashier know not to cash her out. I do remember this. Yeah. You remember this? I do. So she left and returned later with her son and her husband. The two proceeded to yell at Calvin. Based on reports from NBC News, the son shoots Calvin in the head. The three were gone and Calvin had passed away by the time the police had arrived. That just kills me. Like you shot him in the head because he asked you to wear a mask. And then wouldn't bow to you when you insisted you didn't need one. I just feel right. like it's horrible. Yeah. The mother, Char- Charmel, age 45, was arrested. The husband, Larry, age 44, and son, Raymond, I don't, R-A-M-O-N-Y-E-A, oh. age 23, were being sought at the time. I don't know if they've been arrested yet. Since then, you're saying? I get it. Yeah, since then, since I wrote this. Okay. And so they were all being charged with first-degree murder. It was said he was shot because he was being disrespectful. That's full of shit. Calvin was being disrespectful, and so he was shot. But again, we go back to the whole... There is, like... If I if I shot it, I, a lot of people would be dead. Right? If I shot every time I felt somebody was disrespectful to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. The world would be littered with bodies. <laughs> like, you know? But I can't. I, it was the first article I've come across that has to do with the coronavirus. You know, yeah. something. I just remember that being, like, so sad. Like, really, you guys? Have some self-fucking-control. You don't have to shoot everybody that pisses you off. I mean... I wish we could. Sometimes I really do, but we can't. (laughs) Oh, that is sad. So I'm going to tell you about dangerous stuff, but just know that when I'm talking about Michigan, we don't have a lot of dangerous shit. I mean, it was hard to find danger. Okay. Like, 
I like the movie Ghost. Molly, you in danger, girl. But there's <laughs> <laughs> So I think we've talked about this before that our most dangerous lake is Lake Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it has the swift currents and we have the it has the larger waves and it has really bad undertoes. And the riptides are because of the shape of the lake. It's 307 miles long and then only 108 wide from east to west. And the east-west shorelines run parallel to each other. So because of the narrow formation. The northwest, north and west winds, it's just powerful riptides, people drowned. That's the most dangerous thing about Michigan. You can drown or you could freeze. And the most dangerous lake in the world, though, didn't drown people. Do you want to know how it killed people? How? So I read about this in a few different places, but the um, this was uh, out of uh, Uncle John's bathroom reader. Are you ready? You are good with those. I fucking love that. And it's like one of my favorite things. I must have 15 of them. I love Uncle John's bathroom readers. So on August 21st, 1986, nearly 2,000 people and over 3,000 livestock animals in four villages died in about one day. Around 9.30 p.m., people from nearby villages heard rumbling sounded that lasted for about 15 to 20 seconds. And what happened was a gas cloud of carbon dioxide came up from the bottom of the lake, Lake Nios in Cameroon, and it then spilled the, the carbon dioxide, then spills into the nearby valley. Now, we don't see it, right? It's, you, can't see, it's, you can't see the carbon dioxide. Right. People and animals walking outside just suddenly started to drop dead because there's no oxygen. And the people and the mammals were suffocating on the carbon dioxide where they stood. Like, even insects fell out of the sky or fell off branches because they need oxygen also. Birds dropping, like everything. Some people in villages that were, like, a little bit farther down from the lake died if they were sleeping in, like, a low area, like, on their floor, but survived if they were sleeping, like, high off the ground or, like, on a, on a hill because the reach of the carbon dioxide didn't go that high. And those that did survive talked about uncontrollable coughing and they were like vomiting blood. And oh. everyone, yeah, dude, everyone in that area had suffocated on the carbon dioxide cloud that was released from the lake. And the disaster, like nobody knew about it until people just started finding bodies. Like this dude talks about walking down this road and all of a sudden you notice like, there's a dead cow, uh, there's a dead dog, there's dead birds, those are dead bugs. And then you see, like, dead people. It was crazy. That and, would be freaky. Yeah. And after that cloud got released, the water level in the lake went down four feet. <laughs> Whoa. I know, right? So, that see, that's way more dangerous than it could drown you. That lake comes out for you. It comes out of the water, and it comes for you where you are on land. That's what's <laughs> scary. <laughs> so, the most dangerous road curve in Michigan. I got this from... Um, M Live and LenConnect.com. There's a thing called Dead Man's Curve, and it's in Irish Hills, Michigan. And it was originally named after a discovery in 1923. And that was the year the state was updating Michigan Avenue, which is also known as US 12, to make a smoother drive between Chicago and Detroit. And while resurfacing a curve, a Native American burial ground was unearthed, and they found the bones of seven men two children, and one woman. And people in the area began to call that turn Dead Man's Curve because of the bones that were found. And because Europeans still have not learned to stop building Native American burial grounds, it like became a prophecy. There's a man who lives nearby and he chronicles different crashes on his phone with pictures because that curve has become the site of a lot of single car accidents because people take the curve too quickly and this yeah. causes like semis to tip. Some cars fly off into the trees off the curve or cars and motorcycles are pushed into oncoming traffic because the centrifugal force and they get run over. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty bad. But one of the most dangerous road curves in the world, I read about in Wikipedia. So it's called the Stelvio Pass and it's route SS38 and it takes drivers down the um, Alps in Italy, where it borders Switzerland, and it's the highest paved mountain pass in the Alps, and it's the literal definition of a hairpin turn. It's where you're like, literally, you're driving east, 
and two seconds into the turn, you're driving west. Like it's that, <laughs> it is like that wow. sharp of a turn. And there's 75 of them. What's the speed limit? Slow as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> There's 75 of the turns, 48 of them are on the north side of the Alps. So there's like 48 in a row. You're basically driving east and then you do this immediate like 180 degree. Then you're driving west because it's so steep you can't just drive down, right, the mountain. But still crazy. And the last Saturday of every August they have what's called Salvio Bike Day. And the road is closed to motorized traffic and cyclists ride in the road. Around 12,000 people participate in the ride. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I would also I would still crash in a different way. I would now crash on a non motorized vehicle. You know what I mean? I would still crash. I would just crash on a bike this time. So I was going through this thing and I was like, okay, what is the most dangerous animal in Michigan? And I got these from M Live. Freaking and- deer. I know, right? A deer will fight the fuck out of you. Watch it. They'll slap the shit out of you with those hooves. <laughs> but well, they kept saying the most dangerous animal in Michigan was the black widow spider, right? And then the females are called black widow spiders because they're sexual cannibals, meaning they eat their partners after mating. But they say, actually, in the wild, the males have often have room to escape, and they select women that have just eaten. And what's happening is in the lab, the researchers aren't giving the male enough room to get the fuck out of her way and to run off to safety. So that's how they get eaten. <laughs> yeah and the the they're really small spiders the black widows the females are about one and a half inches including their legs and the males are even half that size they're brown and they're non-poisonous the males are mm. so here's the part that i was like are you fucking kidding me although they're considered one of the most dangerous animals in michigan they're not actually that dangerous because no one in the united states has died from a black widow bite since 1983. And about 2,200 people report being bit each year. So that's like 80,000 bites, over 80,000 bites, no death. Yeah. That's, that's not dangerous. You know what I mean? <coughs> Sorry. So it takes around 30 to 60 minutes for the symptoms of the bite to appear. So you have plenty of time to go to the doctor. And the bites can lead to like, it can hurt you. I'm not saying it's not going to hurt you. It can lead to severe muscle pain, muscle spasm, a regular heartbeat, abdominal cramps, but it's not killing you. So then I was like, okay, let me check out something that terrified me as a kid. I used to love the movie Jaws. And one of the ways I would tell myself that I don't need to be afraid when I'm swimming in the lake that I grew up at, I don't have to be afraid in the lake because there's no such thing as freshwater lake sharks. You know what I mean? I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. But I used to be terrified that somebody would let piranhas out of their take, tank and into the lake. And mm-hmm. that I would be then eaten by piranhas. And <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So they actually haven't ever found piranhas in Michigan water. So again, I shouldn't have been that scared. But they have found one of its cousins. There's a fish called, <laughs> dude, you have to look up pictures, a Paku, and it's P-A-C-U. They are the cousin, literally the cousin to piranhas. So piranhas have like really pointed razor sharp teeth and they only eat meat. Pakus are known as vegetarian piranhas, all right? Paku have square teeth. <laughs> they look just like human teeth. They're these square teeth. They look just like human teeth. And they mostly eat like berries and nuts. But they will eat some insects. And they've actually found Paku fish recently in Lake St. Clair and Lake Huron. So the Paku fish, they do have strong teeth and they have really strong bites. Because mind you, they're eating near butts. butts. I meant to say berries and nuts. (laughs) (laughs) Or butts. So they do have really strong bites. But there's this toddler in England and he needed surgery or they needed surgery after they put their fingers in this aquarium and this popcorn fish bit it, thinking probably it was a worm. Mm-hmm. And since their teeth and jaws are made for crushing nuts, it does have some power. Oh, and, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, right? And they're usually sold when they're really small, just a couple inches big. So people aren't aware that they can grow up to three and a half feet long. And they can oh, weigh 90 geez. pounds, dude. <sighs> I was like, no. Again. Yes. So it's believed that the Paku were released in Michigan's lakes by owners who couldn't care for such a large fish. You know, they didn't realize it was going to get that big. 
And Paco will eat fish, other fish in a tank. If they're feeling that they're crowded or that they, they don't have enough food resources, they will eat another fish. And they're normally like a tropical fish. So that's not believed that they could live through a Michigan winter. So they, someone could put them in the lake. But once that, once we have a winter, that fish is dead. So like this winter, they all died. Yes. And the, the only way you'd have to come across one of is someone else put another one in the lake while you were, you know, that summer. Hmm. Yes. So I've got a couple of other random things. So WXYZ has Michigan um, as the state that has the deadliest driving in the winter. And the most, most dangerous strip of expressway is I-94 from Metro Detroit to, to Macomb. 20 people have died driving those miles, like in the last four years. Well, I'm not last four years. From um, 2014 to 2018, so not last year. 2014 to 2018, 20 people have died on that part of the road. Really? And, yeah, dude. And check this out. Crash it in Metro Detroit has 13 deaths. And eight of those people were either walking or riding their bikes. Yeah. Wow. Eight of those people were not even in a car and died on the side of the road. So I looked at this one, another one. <laughs> You're going to like this, okay? There's this site called Road Snacks, and they looked at violent crimes and property crimes reported in cities with over 5,000 people in Michigan. And the number one most dangerous city that came out is Muskegon Heights. See, that's I told you that city mm -hmm. is bad. Just part of, it's part of Muskegon. It's called Muskegon Heights, and it's located in the lower left side of the state, right off Lake Michigan. And one in 44 residents of the cities were a victim of a serious attack with 240 violent crimes being reported. And crime had gone up 10% from 2017 to 2018. I'm going to have to look and compare that with Detroit. Yeah. Go, I was going to say, I would love to. Tell me. Yeah, let me know what's up with that. But yeah, I was like, see, Michigan's not that dangerous. And then that pocky fish. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not dangerous but it'll creep you the hell out <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right well thanks for talking to me jen all right have a good night all right thanks you too all right. bye contact us at anchor or michigan and other mayhem at gmail.com or on facebook to join the conversation listen to the podcast or correct us when necessary rate and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast provider Bye-bye now.